Hey everyone, and welcome to this week's video lecture on light mapping. Light mapping is an advanced technique that we're going to be learning to make our levels look really great in Unity. Light mapping basically means that we're going to be taking the lighting data from all of our lights in the scene and create a separate texture for everything in the game. Lights are really expensive and running them in real time or dynamic lights during our game is going to severely impact our performance. So by using light maps, we're actually creating a cheaper way of displaying the same information. Now it's important to note that light mapping only works on objects that don't move because it's actually baking a texture in to where the object sits and how the light affects it in that area only. We won't be light mapping any of our moving objects. I'll also be covering some advanced lighting techniques in this lecture um, and how shadows work. And we're going to be jumping forth back and forth between both basic and pro features. So if you see me talking about something or something that's not working the way it's currently presented on your screen, that's probably because it's a pro feature only. So to dive right in, let's go ahead and talk about our scene that we have here and the lighting in it. Now generally light mapping is going to work best on a scene that has a lot of information in it. And what I mean by that is right now all we have is a single plane for our floor, a couple of blocks, and some cubes. So the lighting is not going to look really exciting uh, in this scene as opposed to a terrain that had hills and trees and forests you'll get some much better shadows and effects on something like that but we're going to learn on a simple simple scene here so let's go ahead and select our directional light now if you can't find it in your scene you can go here into our hierarchy and click directional light and then hit F to zoom in on it now directional lights work by taking lighting data and applying it to everything in the scene as a sun would. The only way you can change a directional lighting is by rotating its direction. It has no range, it goes on infinitely. So directional lights are great for creating, like I said, sun or moon lighting because those are the only sources uh, in, in our reality that make lighting like that. Now right now we're not receiving any lighting data. Uh, we can move our directional light around but it's not changing. And that's because we have the uh, built-in lighting turned on. So let's go ahead and turn that off. Now we can see our yellow lighting here. And we can see when we move our directional light around it really impacts how the game looks. So we have some cool things we can do with this light. If you go over here in the size we can change its color. We can also change its intensity. So let's set it back to 0 0.5. Next we can change our shadow types. So let's go ahead and choose hard shadows. Now you can see in our scene that everything here is casting a shadow, where previously it wasn't. You can also choose soft shadows, which gives it more of a dithered effect on the outside edges. Let's leave it with hard for now, because we mostly have hard objects anyway. Now in Unity Basic, you won't be able to have dynamic shadows. You can only bake shadows into a light map. So that means our guy here, when we play around, will have a moving shadow. And it should give a little warning that's saying, uh, that explains it when you click on the shadow type. Some of the other features we have here on the side, let me explain what these mean. Obviously the type here is uh, directional. If we were to change this, we could actually change what kind of light it is. So we're going to leave it as directional. A cookie and the cookie size are basically a texture. How it works is you can put a texture in front of a light. And let's say we had a texture that made it look like it was coming through a window or um, it had leaves. Then we could apply a cookie. As a matter of fact, if we wanted to, we could go up to our assets and import light cookies. So let's go ahead and import these real quick and I'll show you how they work. So let's go here to light cookies and we can see we have a flashlight, flashlight irregular, hard, soft, and square. So let's go ahead and apply the square one to our directional light. Now it acts as an alpha mask and masks out everything that you don't want to be seen. So this is a really cheap way, uh, especially in Unity Basic, of faking shadows because you can create a file, a cookie file, which is a texture in Photoshop and then apply it to a light. So we don't really want a cookie. So 
we're going to go ahead and select none here. Next we have our shadow settings. We can adjust the strength of the shadows and its resolution. So if we wanted very high resolution shadows, we could set it there and force the override. And there's the shadow bias, which kind of is like the distance. We can draw a halo around our light, which usually only works for point lights, but you can see here that it does have a halo. It depends on how close you place your directional light to your scene, and most of the time mine are up in the sky, so a halo doesn't really have a huge impact. But using a halo and some other tricks, you can actually make a fake sun if you don't already have one painted in your skybox like we do here. We can also attach a lens flare. Same as cookies. Let's go ahead and import those real quick. So we're going to go to assets, import package, light flares. We have a 50 millimeter zoom, a small flare, and a sun. So let's go ahead and throw the sun on the lens flare spot. And now when we look up at their light, we can see that it has a, f a lens flare here. Render mode basically means you can set it to important or not important or to automatic. And this acts, this works on how lights are interpreted. If there are a ton of lights conflicting the same area of your screen, uh, important ones will override the non-important ones. A culling mask, you can set lights to not hit certain layers, which are up here. So this is useful if you have an object that you don't want light to hit, such as a window maybe. You can set that window to a certain layer and then choose here to skip these layers. Finally, the last one here is light mapping. This is important to us because we're going to be doing some light mapping. Now, the three options here are real-time only, auto, and baked only. On auto, it will both be baked and be used in real-time. In real-time, it won't. the lighting data will not be picked up by the light mapper. And if it's baked only, that it won't be dynamic, meaning our character here will not receive light from it. So there's a quick glance at some of the options in lights. Um, obviously point lights and spotlights have a couple different things, but they share a lot of common things as well. So let's say we had something in our scene that wasn't going to move, like some, a structure of some kind. So I'm going to go ahead and create a small structure out of cubes. That will give us some interesting shadow effects. Now the reason I did this is because our boxes here are going to be disappearing once we collect them. So we don't want to bake in a shadow because if we baked in these shadows right here and then we collected them, the shadows will still be displayed on the floor, which is not ideal. However, since these cubes here in the middle are not going to move by any means, we can bake the shadow in. So let's go about doing this. The first thing that we want to do is everything that doesn't move in your scene, you want to set to static, which is up here in the top right corner. So let's go ahead and select our objects here and set them to static. The same goes for our walls and floor. So only the things that are static will be light mapped, meaning our cubes here will not be light mapped, which is what we want. We want those shadows to remain dynamic. Again, in Unity Basic you won't have dynamic shadows, so just pointing that out. So next we want to go to our window, and then we want light mapping. There's a great guide at unity.com for learning how to light map. It both has a quick start and an advanced guide that will really dig down and teach you the different options and how to light map correctly. The purpose of this tutorial is to give you a brief idea of how things work. So this is our light mapping menu, and we're mostly going to be concerned about the bake tab. The bake tab bakes your entire scene, as opposed to the object tab, which you can choose and set different individual settings for objects. So we're going to work in bake. Now don't be overwhelmed because there are a ton of options here and if you've never done any kind of rendering before, say in Max or Maya, this will all be new to you. And that's okay. I'm going to go over some of the quick basics here. We have 
both dual light maps, single light maps, and directional light maps. Now the big differences are going to be between single and dual, and that is single is made for lower resolution and does not pick up on specular maps and bump maps, whereas dual picks up both. We don't really have any fancy textures in our scene, so let's just go ahead and do single. Now here, you can choose quality, high or low, and these are presets that Unity has for how you want to do a bake. Let's go ahead and leave it on high. Bounces are the number of times that it calculates a light bouncing off a surface and continuing on to hit another surface. Now for really good renders, you want to have a high number of bounces, but because we don't have a ton of data in our scene, we can leave it at one. Sky color also affects your lighting. We can change this to any color we want, and it'll have an impact on the overall mood of your light map once it's been baked. It's default to this light blue color here because it's a nice sky color, but we could change it to whatever we wanted. I'm going to leave it at the default. This is the intensity for that color, so we could crank this up higher if we wanted to. The next important one here is going to be the final gather rays, and this has a huge impact on the time it takes to bake. In the simplest terms, having a higher number of final gather rays means that you have a higher resolution light map, just because it takes in more of the data. So for now, let's decrease this, just because we don't want anything major. We don't want to take up a lot of time cooking this either. We can add ambient occlusion here if we want, uh, which is, if anyone's done any rendering before, they know it, uh, it's basically a 3D shading method that tries to produce more realistic shadows. Um, we can go ahead and add some if you want, or not. The next big thing, and probably arguably the biggest thing to learn right away, is the resolution. If we go over here and choose Show Resolution, we can zoom in and see we have a checkered pattern on all of our objects. The larger the resolution number, the smaller the squares will appear here. And the, and the smaller these squares are means the more data they will take, providing a much better light map, but also at the cost of a much longer bake. Unity sets it at a standard 50, but that's going to take a while, so we're going to drop ours all the way down to 5. And you can see our squares have jumped pretty dramatically. Again, if you want to learn more about any of these settings, you'll want to dive into learning rendering stuff as well as Unity's guides on both light mapping, uh, the quick start and the advanced. So let's go ahead and bake our scene. You can see here, down in the bottom right corner, it was it popped up and our scene was super quick so let's go ahead and close this. And if you still see the squares here, we want to turn these back off. So go back in your light mapping and hit the show resolution button and I'm going to take this off to the side. Now the key here is if we were to take all of our lights in our scene and turn them off by going up here to this check mark next to their name that deactivates an object. Our scene would look almost identical because we have a texture baked into our static objects here. Now you can see that our cubes and our guy are darker because we don't have any lights in the scene. But if you were developing for mobile, removing all these lights is going to be a huge boost to performance. You can compensate for losing your lights by going to Edit, Render Settings, and choosing the ambient light and increasing this to match something. If you want it colored, you can do that, or you can just increase the gray value to lighter. Now let's go ahead and play and we can see how it looks in game. Now, like we did, uh, like I said, we did a very low resolution bake, so it's super pixelated and not very good looking. But you can kind of see how light mapping works. Now, the other thing to note is if we move one of these objects, the shadows are still baked in. So anytime you move a static object after a light map, you're going to have to rebake it, which means you want to try and get your scene right before you do a big bake or do a small bake and then move things around before your final pass. We can turn our light maps on and off here. If you have your light mapping window open, this little box should be displayed, and so you can use light maps on and off. Let's go ahead and turn our lights back on. And we can set our render settings back to the color it was, which is 51. And now our guy looks the same as he did before.
Now if you need to clear your light maps or you don't want them anymore, bring your light mapping window back up and just hit clear. And this will remove all the light maps from your scene. So this was a quick and dirty tutorial on light mapping. This is a really in-depth subject that you could spend a lot of time learning about. But because Unity, one of Unity's strengths is mobile development, it's a good thing to learn early uh, just for optimization on mobile platforms.